Have you ever played the hit indie game Celeste where you have to perform fast-paced platforming in a 2D environment with an 8-bit art style? Now let me ask you another question. Remember the yellow wisp from Sonic Colors that was like a drill thingy? Well do I have news for you. These two are now happily married and expecting a child this year. They're going to name it Pepper. I'm now sick of this weird, twisted metaphor. Moving on. Imagine this, an indie showcase from Nintendo. In chat, you've got four different types of people. The people who are ironically spamming big first-party releases, the people who are trying to correct the first group as they don't realize they're being ironic, the people spamming a popular indie title, and the people actually discussing the content being shown, normally with the snoozing emoji. At this point, I don't know why I feel the need to catch these things live, or even why I watch them at all, but last November, they had a pretty dang good one. We got a little to the left, Blanc, Have a Nice Death, Inscription, Sports Story. But none of those interested me, because six minutes in, we got one of the most hype trailers I've ever seen. A character with vibrant hair drops out of nowhere with a comically large drill, and as they start to crank it up, we're shown the developer and publisher of this game. But who cares about the people actually making the game? Look at the publisher! Devolver Digital? Those are the people who published indie hits such as Enter the Gungeon, Pikuniku, Gris, and Cult of the Lamb! And then the trailer truly begins. It starts playing this intense, breakbeat music that they made sure even the deaf could enjoy. We then get our first look at the gameplay. It has the intensity and speed of Celeste with the drill mechanic of Sonic Colors. Did I mention these two are getting married? Then it shows off some enemies. At first I thought combat would just be drill into the enemies, except the enemies have drills too, and they have AI that allows them to chase you underground. They kind of look like zombie narwhals, which is kind of funny, and how they turn into skeletons upon death? Incredible. Okay, while editing I figured out these things are called gnarlings, which is even funnier. Then we see a boss fight against a gigantic stag beetle that can climb walls. The arena it's in shows just how much potential this game has. Using the drill, you can go through the walls and ceiling of the arena, and as the stag chases you, you have to drill its belly to do damage. Or at least that's what I gathered, since the boss is on screen for less than 10 seconds. As the trailer goes on, we learn that this drill isn't the only gimmick this game has to offer. While it doesn't show much, it shows us a gun and a huge 3D robot. In that point in the trailer, I had already started an investment fund. There's more enemy variations too. One's in bomber planes, one's with long swords, cooks. And then we get to what, in my opinion, is the most promising mechanic this game has in store. The hook. I mean, look at this. The only way they could mess this up is if they make it automatic instead of manual. This is the kind of high-speed action game I love. Jump back into livestream, my mind has just been blown, and then... Can you dig this game? Just shut up, Nintendo. Luckily, this lady is quickly replaced with someone who actually knows what they're talking about. He gives some more details on the game's plot. The girl we play as is named Pepper, who's a spicy, spicy drill-wielding drill treasure hunter who has been, has been shipwrecked, shipwrecked and, and robbed. robbed. She has to get her stuff back, she can level up the drill, blah blah blah. I want to see more gameplay. So I looked up the developers on YouTube and found their showcase of the first level, sitting at only 7,500 views. Apparently I'm the only one who's hyped for this game. This video gives us insight into a few more mechanics. One, these collectible pirate coins. They seem to be similar to star coins in Mario and red coins in Sonic. Two, boosting. When you come out of the ground you can perform a boost, which gives you I don't know. In high-speed platforming sections, I bet this feels incredible to use. It also looks great in combat, like look at this, whoa Speaking of combat, this teaser shows off nests. They're like spawners from Minecraft. You have to destroy them or they're just gonna keep on spawning new enemies. Besides that, 1-1 one -one is, shocker, just a tutorial stage. Luckily, I was then recommended a video by user XXXEcstasyXXX. You can tell they're a real gamer by how many X's are in their name. They made a 50 minute video displaying basically the entire history of Pepper Grinder, even stuff from really, really early in development. As much as I would love to give a breakdown of this huge video, 
that would be stealing, so I'll link the channel down below. However, I'll still cover parts of it, specifically a few of the new level themes. We got ice, snow, lava, caves, beach, is that a shark? It seems like each biome comes with its own set of mechanics. In the cave, you have a minecart, kinda like the one from Donkey Kong Country. On the beach, you've got water, which your drill allows you to skip across. The snow biome has ice blocks that you have to fire yourself out of cannons to break. Did I mention this game has cannons? The lava biome has these dispensers that makes platforms in the lava for you to use, but you gotta be fast or else you're going to lava town. This video also had some new enemy variants, such as flamethrower gnarling, gun gnarling, fart bug, bouncy drill, shark. We also get a look at the main antagonist, whose name I don't think has been confirmed. They can dual wield drills, and they lead the gnarlings, and that's all we know. Yeah, a lot of this video is just random gameplay snippets the developer posted on Twitter, so it doesn't give us that much more info. However, solely from what I've covered in this video, this is one of my most hyped games for this year. More than Minecraft Legends, more than Pikmin 4, heck, even more than Tears of the Kingdom. Can you tell I'm not a Zelda fan? This game doesn't have a solid release date yet, but I can guarantee you, when it comes out, I will play it. And I hope you will too. If this becomes the next indie game success story, that would make me extremely happy. And this isn't even me promoting my own game, I don't know how to code. But for now, let's just see if we can find anything else on the game. Our old favorite one had been slightly redesigned okay. and we found some new ones on the market. We paid a price range of $25 to $50 for these. On second thought, this looks really boring. <laughs>